O Hecate, Skeote, the Dark One, you walk with me through the shadows. Guide me through the hidden mysteries of life. Help me confront my fears with courage and embrace, embrace the wisdom found in the unknown. Hecate Melone, bringer of nightmares, you who reveals the truth in dreams. Unveil the messages hidden in the night. Guide me through the realm of visions and help me see what lies unresolved from within. O oh, Hecate, goddess of the night, of shadow, of dreams, in your power I walk. I walk with courage. In your wisdom I grow. In your light I find my way through the dark. Hello there. Welcome to Kappa and Cards. Um, today we are continuing with our series on uh, Who is Hecate? Insights from the Epitaphs. Um, we are looking this week at, at Hecate as the Dark Mother. So grab your tea. If you have someone who has made you cookies, grab you cookies. Um, and uh, we're going to have a quick chat today about this, uh, this new aspect, or at least for our discussion purposes anyway, the new aspect of Hecate as a Dark Mother. So this is our final episode in this series. Um, this entire episode, all six uh, weeks worth of videos will be available on the website. They're, of course, available here on YouTube as well, but it will be available on the website as a program. And um, today we're going to explore the more darker side of the Hecate. We're going to focus on her connection to the unknown um, and her guidance through shadow work. We're going to explore um, Hecate Scotia, uh, Scotia. I'm, I, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, I'm dyslexic, so that entire, uh, when I was reciting the hymn, I was saying the T in front of the sco, so my apologies for that. It's Scotia, and that's this card. So I'm gonna hold that up for you. And that means the dark one. The key words are mystery, gloom, and shadow. And the next one is Melone, and that's bringer of nightmares. And then this one is the keywords are ghosts, nightmares, and funerals. So through these epitaphs, we're going to explore her role, guiding through the darkness, helping us comfort our fears, and embracing the transformative work of shadow or the transformation of shadow work. Now, um, in the previous episodes, we looked at Hecate's role as a god, um, as a protector, a source of wisdom, and a source of transformation. And today we're gonna to turn to this connection that we have related to those darker aspects of her. Um, so we're gonna start with Scotia. Again, I'm gonna hold this card up for you. Scotia. Now this is part of the, um, the expanded deck that I finished. Um, when the deck was first released, it was released with 33 cards. And then I created a second deck of cards um, with 33 additional cards. And this is the expansion to that deck. Um, if you're someone who has a deck, if you send me an email, I'll send you that second deck for no charge. Um, but the second deck has the some of the uh, epithets we've been talking about, as well as some of the other cards. Um, there's some energy cards that turned out very well. And we'll, we'll go over those maybe in another, um, another episode or another series. Uh, later on. But this particular card is Scotia, and it is the dark one. It represents Hecate's deep connection to the darkness and the unknown, the mysteries of the night. As Scotia, Hecate helps us confront what is hidden, guiding us through fear and uncertainty with and the shadow, shadowy aspects of ourselves. Hecate Scotia is often invoked when we're going through periods of uncertainty or when we're ready to explore parts of ourselves that are left in the dark. Um, she helps navigate the shadow side of our psyche, encouraging us to embrace the power that lies in the unknown. So when we're thinking about this particular card, the words that I chose for this card are mystery, gloom, and shadow. Um, so we're really looking at um, that side of uh, Hecate that a lot of people tend to gravitate towards. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I saw someone saying hail the, to the dark mother, um, 
there's always someone who wants to be the creepy one or to go on to the side. Not so many of, a, of them tend to um, want, I mean, I guess you could say it the other way as well though, because everyone is light and love to a certain extent. So maybe it's just 50-50 and it really depends on our state of mind when we're approached or when we're in the middle of it. Um, so, um, Scotia and these type of darker epitaphs are often invoked when people are in a place or, or in a place where left-handed path work or left-handed path magic might be at play. Um, if you think about, um, uh, the Hecatean, um, if you think about some of the work in, uh, the, uh, PGM, um, a lot of that's curse work right? It's a lot of work that has to do with revenge, curses, you know, sending out baneful magic, um, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, we cannot assume that everyone works the same way, and sometimes baneful work may be required, right? I, I was told by a very, very wise person, it says, a witch that cannot curse cannot heal. Um, so while I prefer um, to maybe not work on that side all the time, I think that sometimes you, you don't have a choice, right? You've got to protect what's yours. I like to look at some of this work as possibly removing positives instead of sending negatives. Now, if you think about it, maybe you don't want to curse the one person. Maybe you just bless everyone else around them, right? So people, people, tend to look at something like, for example, I'll use this as an example. Um, if you do spell work for someone to help them get a job, all right, and there are 10 people who are applying for this job, you do spell work for the one person to get a job. You also did spell work for nine people not to get a job, right? So I guess that's how you, it, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? Is all I'm trying to say with that. Um, so like the prayer I recited at the beginning of our call, the hymn that I recited was to welcome uh, Scotia into your own work. But many of these epitaphs that we've discussed in the series have called upon us to take messages outward. So just keep that in mind. You may call on Scotia to, you know, come in and, and reveal messages to you or to be there for you, or you may send her out. Remember, Hecate is a messenger goddess, right? She is there to take your information and take it elsewhere or communicate that information. So the path works both ways. Now, how would you work with Scotia? Um, you can invoke Hecate Scotia when you're engaging in shadow work, exploring the unknown, confronting personal fears, um, some ways you might do this is meditate in a dark, quiet space, allowing her presence to guide you into areas of your life that you might be avoiding, right? So this is another thing. You could also do the same thing with the torchbearer, right? Because, you know, the light bringer, she's going to come in and shine that light. You could do the th same thing with the key bearer because she's going to unlock those channels and let you in. The, much of this work when you're working with Hecate, even though these, um, I mean, there are so many different epithets that, I mean, that you can work with, right? Even though there's so many of them, they all work hand in hand and they don't all have something to do with one another. You know, whether it be Soterra, um, you know, the savior, whether it's Angelos, right? All of these epithets can work together in order to give you a holistic view of what you're trying to accomplish. So that is Scotia. Did I say it right again? Yes, Scotia. Um, and let me hold that up for you one more time. And this is, again, the key words were mystery, gloom, and shadow. It's raining outside right now. I didn't even tell you what day it was. Oh my goodness, it is the 15th of November. Oh, it's almost over, right? The month is almost over, well, halfway. All right. This is Malino, Malinoi, Malinoi, Hecate Molini. <laughs> I don't know why I get so tongue tied sometimes. And then it comes out sounding like cornbread, y'all. Okay. Um, the keywords for this are ghosts, nightmares, and funerals. So I'm going to hold that up one more time. When I was first researching for this deck, um, 
in this particular card, it was so, it was hilarious. I found an article that said that uh, Hecate Malone is the bringer of nightmares. And the reason was that she had the power to drive people insane. And I was like, well, that's very interesting. I mean, if you go and look on the web, there's thousands and thousands of pages that'll give you information that contradicts each other. And you have to take a lot of it with a grain of salt. Um, but some of the, the epithets that I've worked with in this deck, I worked with a, um, a very dear friend, a torchbearer, and I'm not gonna say her name because um, she may not be out of the closet um, or she may have gone back in considering our political climate. But um, they, it was, we we're both mentioned in the uh, Circle, Circle of Hecate um, by Sarita de Este. Um, but uh, I, I recommend highly going and check that out. It's um, a, I'll put it in our, in my chat. There's a Tumblr page that has a ton of all of these epithets outlined. Um, so again, we're talking about Melone. And um, this one, again, is, is Ghosts, Nightmares, and Funerals. And... In this, uh, in this, in this epitaph, um, she guides us through the realm of dreams, right? So then again, this is another lumial space. This is an area in between, right? Um, she guides us through the realm of dreams, particularly nightmares and unsettling visions. She brings us face to face with our deepest fears and, and often revealing messages from the subconscious through dreams and visions. Um, so here again, a messenger goddess bringing us information, um, lucid dreaming, dreams and visions, you know, we'll certainly go into that a little bit here in a moment, but all of that's going to be something that that realm that she's going to have control over. And while nightmares may be unsettling, they offer us the opportunity for growth and healing. Hecate Maloney helps us work through difficult emotions and unsolved issues that surface during dreams, guiding us to confront and understand these experiences for our spiritual and emotional growth. I always thought of this epitaph as being one that would be invoked by someone who had been harmed by abuse, right? So be it physical, mental, um, it, it could be an attack from a person in power, let's say. Um, perhaps a situation of child abuse or an attack based on race or religion or LB, LGBTQI status um, or some other classification where someone would be, would be singled out. The bringer of nightmares is great for showing people the full impact of their actions. While the prayer from earlier um, was to call those images to yourself so that you could learn from them, they could just as easily be sent to someone else. So when we think about how we might, we might use this particular epithet, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it is not news to anyone on this channel that Hecate was used in curses. I mean, come on now, you know she was, don't even pretend like it wasn't the case. So um, when we think about um, justice, right, that's one of the, her, the virtues, it's one of the five virtues. Um, some people may look at, is this justice or is this revenge? You could call upon Malone and you could maybe look for justice to be served in places where um, maybe the mundane world is, is lacking. Um, you could certainly call upon her to, to maybe reveal someone's actions to them, right? I, I think one of the best curses I ever heard was, may your actions be revealed to you. You know, the full power of what you've done, may that come back to you. And that's probably one of the most powerful things you could do. Um, so how would you work with Hecate Malone? Um, you could work with her for dream work and nightmares. Um, you could keep a dream journal. Uh, that is number one, right? Get a book. I mean, if you've got an, any type of iPhone, Android, they all have voice recorders. Um, if you don't want to sit and jot something down, sometimes it's a struggle to get out and let me type all this on the phone and the thumbs and the fingernails and it's it, right? Just use your voice recorder, say what you want to say and save it as a note. Um, I used, the phone I used to have uh, let me write on the screen with a stylus. I do miss that one, um, but I do love my new phone. I digress, um, but you can certainly record your voice recordings on there. And, and write down exactly and, and recite exactly what was happening in the dream. Um, 
and then you can track those to see if there's any reoccurring themes that come up. Um, asking Melone to help you uncover deeper meanings behind messages in your dreams. Um, you could use the dream work tool for healing and transformation. I think that it is a, um, a very useful tool to do dream work. Um, just a few years ago, I say a few years ago, it was many years ago, um, I participated in a visualization session. Um, I'm sure you've ordered vision boards. I mean, that's all about what, um, um, God, I can't even remember, Pinterest. <laughs> I was like, God, I can't even remember the name of that social media product. Um, but that's what Pinterest is all about, dream boards. Everybody's got a dream board. Um, you know, sit down and line those things up that you are thinking about, that you are dreaming about. Um, and then you can use those as a tool to help yourself heal through a, through your own work or through a, some sort of transformation or trans transforming someone else, right? Um, so that's our two cards for the day. I only pulled two. There are a couple. I mean, I could have pulled Cathonia because um, she's in here as well. Um, let's see, who else do I have in here? Yeah, Cathonia is in here. Um, she would have definitely fell into this uh, dark mother area. Um, there are many, many other cards that well, may be available for this particular um, dark mother series. Um, but these are the two we worked with. Um, so these aspects remind us of her ability to guide us through the shadows and help us embrace the unknown. Um, as we conclude the series, take the time to reflect on the aspects of your life where fears or the unknown um, may be stopping you from doing something. Are you ready to face those fears? Um, perhaps working with shadow work or dream work or exploring that darker side um, might help you. The left-handed path, they, they call it left-handed path. Frankly, I believe, I'm ambidextrous, I like to say. Um, I, I don't think you can do one without the other. So don't be afraid of these darker aspects because without darkness, there's no light, right? And without light, there's no darkness. You need both of these to work and, and to be able to embrace the full power of your magical abilities. Um, so, um, you could also look at, while you're working with her, you could look at creating rituals or meditations or things like that to help you um, reconnect with these particular uh, epitaphs. So as we've concluded this journey, we've reflected on the many faces of the goddess, right? We've talked about, you know, um, we've talked about Angelos, right? We've talked about um, the ones that I couldn't say, <laughs> Pantropos, right? We've talked about the many, the many aspects um, and over these episodes, we have explored Hecate as a light bearer, as a guardian of the underworld, a divine protector, a source of wisdom, and a guide through the unknown. Um, in all of her forms, she's off, she offers us strength, clarity, and protection. And through her epitaphs, we have seen how she walks with us through every phase of life. Whether we're at the crossroads, whether we're seeking justice, or just delving into her mysteries, um, she stands as a constant guide, helping us to grow and transform and embrace our personal power. Um, so as we move forward, I encourage you to continue working with Hecate in your own practice. Whether you call upon her for moments of clarity, protection, or courage, know that her presence is always near. The lessons we've learned for each of the epitaphs are not confined to the episodes, but are energies that you may call upon any time in your life. I hope that you have enjoyed this series. Um, I really have enjoyed working with you on it. I thought that it was, um, it's been very insightful for me. Um, I've loved sharing the cards with you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as I mentioned, these are, now these decks can be combined. Um, these decks are part of the one, that's a whopping deck now. Um, but it is available on my website at hecatebremo.org. Um, this one comes with a bag. Um, I do have a few decks that are uh, ready to ship. Um, I am using the website as a way to continue to support my sanctuary. Um, the Sanctuary of Hecate Bremo has a sanctuary commitment where we uh, populate, uh, populate, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. We um, fill the blessing boxes of Goldsboro at least once a month. So we go around to the different, their little pink and purple boxes that are throughout Wayne County, and we put fresh fruit, and we put vegetables, and we put canned goods, and we put socks, and gloves, and hats. Um, when it's cold, we put chapstick and things like that, personal hygiene items. Uh, we, we fill these boxes up so that those who are either in a situation where they need a blessing um, and they can take it if they're, you know, food insecure or house insecure, they have something available for them to eat and to keep themselves warm. Um, so we fill those boxes up through uh, the sales on my website. I have some, a uh, couple of malas that I have for sale. I have some readings that you can buy. I have a couple of decks. I have my um, Crossroads Oracle. Um, this one is that deck is dedicated to the goddess Hecate through my Torchbearer project. And then I have the River Witch Oracle. Um, this is a deck that I created about Southern magic. So both of these decks are available on my website. Um, and all of the money, like I said, goes to help support the Sanctuary of Hecate Bromo. Um, so that is all I have for you today. Um, I may skip next week. I'm not sure. It depends on if I have time to get a new, um, a new series started. But I think we'll look at maybe another set of cards. I don't, I don't know which one we may deal with. If you have any, um, any opinions, you can certainly leave them in the comments. Um, and I'll be happy to check those out and get back with you. But I think next time maybe we'll look at one of the other uh, one of the other um, suits within the uh, Crossroads Oracle. Um, so for now, that's all I have for you. I hope you have a glorious day and a wonderful weekend, and I'll speak with you soon.